A lot of people say no regrets is a philosophy of life, but in a new book by Daniel Pink called The Power of Regret, he says it's nonsense and that's even dangerous. Daniel joins us now to tell us more. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you say that they speak to our values. Uh, how so? Well, when we know what people regret the most, we know what they value the most. And um, I've conducted a very large survey around the world where I've gathered now 20,000 regrets from people all over the world, 109 countries, and found that over and over again, people around the world regret the same four things. And that gives us a sense of what they value the most and what constitutes a life well lived. Overall, though, you, did you find that older people regret things they didn't do and younger people regret something different? That's a big change, yes. There are two kinds of regrets. Regrets of action, what we did. Regrets of inaction, what we didn't do. And a big finding is that over time, we're much more likely to have regrets about what we didn't do, regrets of inaction, than regrets of what we did, regrets of action. Oh. Yeah, and what we didn't do sometimes is keeping up relationships that have faded away over, over time. That was one of the four. The big, the two big uh, inaction regrets are regrets about not reaching out. So having a friendship that might have drifted apart, feeling awkward about reaching out, not reaching out and having a drift apart further. Also, lots of regrets about not taking chances, whether that meant asking somebody out on a date, uh. traveling, speaking up at work, starting a business. Or uh, but there's a moral aspect too about not regret, regretting not doing the right thing in a certain instance. Yeah, that's one of the big four uh, are moral regrets. Moral regrets are if only I'd done the right thing. And what that comes out in pretty astonishing numbers is regrets that people have early in their life about bullying, about hmm. bullying other kids. I mean, and it, it lingers for decades and decades and decades. Also, a lot of regrets about marital infidelity in that oh. category. Wow. And sometimes I wonder, you know, it, it, something, a regret that I might have when I was in my 20s, and I'm like, yeah, I know that's wrong, but uh, bygones. As I get older, I think, oh, my God, that was horrible. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I mean, I think that's, I think, I think, um, I think, Larry, they call that maturity. Um, <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, sort of reckoning with what matters in life. And this is the healthy thing about, about talking about our regrets, that we have this taboo about talking about our regrets. We think yeah. we're supposed to be positive all the time and always look forward. And that's not healthy living. Uh, saying you have no regrets is not an act of courage. Real courage is staring your regrets in the eye and doing something about it them so it's not cool to do hashtag no regrets you know what it's it, you know what it's a well here's the thing it's like it's a performance yeah you know it's like like so much on social media it's just a curated performance it's not actual real authentic living real authentic living is saying hey i'm a human being i have regrets let me treat myself with kindness rather than compassion so then let you, me talk about it and let me draw a lesson from it real quick should we go back 10 20 years to maybe make amends or is that a bad idea? Could that open something up that maybe you don't want opened up? You know, I think that your heart and your soul tell you. Yeah, if, you're, if you feel compelled to do that, to make amends to someone you've hurt, absolutely do it. Uh, people are much more receptive to that than I think most of us realize. Yeah. Well, it's fascinating. The book is called The Power of Regret, How Looking Backward Moves Us Forward. For more, you can check out worldregretsurvey.com. Thanks for joining us, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. A pleasure.